Hey guys, I am getting used to this vlogging stuff, but hopefully you guys will enjoy this week. I totally forgot to like record an intro at the beginning of the week, but hopefully I'll get the hang of it eventually. So basically what I was working on all week this week was starting Deceiving Darkness, which, you know, I started plotting it a little bit last week. And this week I really got into a lot more discussions with my husband about the plot for Deceiving Darkness. We talked about it on a car ride that we had. Um, I uploaded my previous video just kind of explaining what I'm going to be doing in these vlogs on Tuesday. And then that afternoon we went out to a bunch of shopping and stuff, getting ready for this Romance Writers Conference that I'm going to next next week and we let our son play we took him to one of those uh, trampoline parks and we let him play and have fun um, there and he was having a good time and got himself kind of worn out we had a nice dinner but I didn't get a lot of footage of that but I will put a little bit in there and then on Wednesday morning for my husband's 39th birthday we drove to Myrtle Beach and we went to the aquarium and had a lot of fun so I'm just gonna show you guys some of the footage from this week hopefully you will enjoy it and then I'll see you again at the end of the video to wrap it up. in Myrtle Beach enjoying my husband's birthday so I'm taking a few days off but I did bring my plotting notes with me and we talked some about deceiving darkness on the drive over here um, which was really fun and we did some shopping we went to the aquarium and we've been chilling out the hotel room for a little bit because it is hot as you know what outside but now we are going to the pool and um, just wanted to show off my new hat that I got today when we were out shopping. Not today, Satan. I also got a Buffy the Vampire Slayer t-shirt, which I will wear later on, either in this video or another one. I love it. All right, guys, so I will probably pop in some footage of us at the aquarium and stuff that we're doing here, just kind of taking a break in the middle of the week, which is awesome, and celebrating my hubby's 39th birthday. Happy birthday, George. I love you. <music> Had a good birthday. Yeah, good birthday. Right. So we slept so hard last night. We stayed up until like midnight, I think, with our six-year-old, and we all slept in a hotel room together and. Um, we aren't used to having him stay up so late, so it was kind of crazy, um, but we had a fun time, and we all slept until like after nine today, and got our showers and everything, and now we are headed to breakfast. How did you, you enjoy your breakfast? It was good. What was your favorite thing? Um, I think it was like the 
I did eat a lot of eggs. I like the egg with syrup. You liked the eggs with syrup? Yeah. And you tried pancakes with what? Ketchup. Ketchup. That is so weird. <laughs> it's delicious, right? Tasty. Yep. All right. Now we are getting back in the car and heading back to Charleston. Yeah. Okay, so we are on our way home and of course I had to pull my notebook and everything out of my bag. I pretty much always have a notebook with me because, you know, I'm a writer um, and usually it's got Hello Kitty on it somewhere. <laughs> so I have, I grabbed this notebook and it's just got a little elastic here and some Hello Kitty puppy stickers and I haven't really written in this much. So I'm going to use that today for some notes for Deceiving Darkness. And then I also have my pen case here, which is um, Toki Doki for Hello Kitty. It's old, so you can see some of the stuff rubbing off. But this is like from their circus Hello Kitty. So you've got like evil Knievel looking stuff and the elephants and things like that. But, sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. But inside, I have a bunch of like Tombow Twin Tone markers. And what I always do when I'm plotting, especially something that's multiple POV is I tend to um, color code. So I've got a color coding system for Harper, Jackson, Leah, and Airden because I'll be in each of their POVs or points of view. So um, we've got all our stuff set up here and while my husband is driving we are going to talk through some Deceiving Darkness plot. It's exciting. Friday afternoon and I'm about to put this vlog together and upload it for you guys to see. As far as the week went, what I'd really like um, to talk about in some of these vlogs is kind of how the writing process went, where I am in the process of writing to sort of fill you guys in on how things happen as a writer. I think that a lot of people think as writers we literally just like sit down at the keyboard every day and the words just pour forth and you know we don't have to really think too much about what happens it's just like a movie going on in our heads and we just write and it just magically comes together and while that is true like a tiny bit true it's really not even half of the process like when I first started writing like I quit my job and started writing in 2007 and when I first started I knew that I wanted to be a writer I knew I wanted to tell, tell stories but I really thought that it would be a lot easier than it was I thought I could just have an idea and sit down and the story would practically just write itself. And then once I actually sat down to start writing, I realized nobody's going to tell me what happens next in this story. I have to completely figure it out. And there's a bajillion unending number of possibilities of what could happen in the story. And it's up to me to decide what in the world's going to happen. And it's not even just that simple. It's not like I can just pick 
pick an idea and run with it. There's structure that goes into stories like when's the best place to have a twist? Where's the best place? And how do you introduce new characters? How do you introduce secrets? How do you introduce mysteries? How do you keep people turning pages? How do you structure the story for the genre that you're writing? There is so much that goes into learning to be a writer and to writing well. And I still feel like I haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg in terms of what I need to learn to be the best writer that I can be. I definitely know that I have so much more that I can learn. That's why I'm constantly trying out new things, reading articles on writing. I'm constantly reading books on writing, reading other great authors so that I can get ideas from how they do things and take inspiration from that. I watch a lot of movies, a lot of anime, a lot of stories on film so that I can really see how stories are told, how people do stuff. Like now that I'm a writer, I look at a lot of movies and different media. Like, you know, we were watching an anime on Netflix the other day called Blame. It was, it's like a two hour Netflix movie and it's a sci-fi thing and it was really, really cool. So watch that if you get a chance. But I was watching it and it's like, instead of just sitting back and enjoying the story, my writer brain gets engaged now and I'm thinking, okay, is this the end of act one? How did they do that? How did they build that suspense there? What are they doing with this tech? How are they building this world? so that we can understand it in such a short period of time. And it's really cool. I totally geek out on those kinds of things when it comes to the writing of like, how do other writers put those things together? And it's really fun for me. But when you sit down to write your own story, you realize, you know, there is, there's, there's structure and there's things that you learn along the way. And the more experience you have writing, the easier it does get to some degree. But then you, it's like you take on a new level and you want to get even better. And so I feel like I'm always pushing myself to try to hit that next level. So now that I'm working on book 10 of the series that I've been writing for eight years of my life, now that I'm working on book 10, I feel the pressure to make it the best book so far in the series. I cannot wait to show you as the cover because for me this is by far the best cover so far in the series I absolutely love it I hope that you guys love it too but I want to make it the best book in the series there's still so much that has to happen in this world and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to wrap it up in two more books or if there's gonna be three more books but I'll know a little better once I get the plotting down and I've been you know that's one of the reasons there are more months in between these books than maybe you guys want there to be part of it is because I need months to be thinking of what's gonna happen next where are the twists where are the turns what's going to happen with Harper and Jackson what's going to happen with Leah and Airden there was a big moment in beyond the darkness between the two of them that changes the whole story for them so what's going to happen next you know I've got ideas and I know kind of where things are going but there's still a lot of the details of the scenes to figure out so you can see from earlier in my video I was working on um, my plotting sheets and coming up with things about the characters and this is kind of the process that I go through every time I start a new book is I sit down with the plot I sit down with my color coding and I start thinking about each character and I take you know each character as if I get inside their head and I think okay where is Airden in this book what is it that he is facing what does he need to grow as an individual I have to think about the things he's been through in the past like all the trauma that he's been through I have to think about his relationship and how he feels about Leah but also how he feels about his brother and missing his brother and being separated from him and you know there's just so much that goes into each one of these four main POV characters then I have to also be thinking about things that are happening off camera. Don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil anything specific for you. The things that are happening off camera with the remaining priestesses of the Order of Shadows, who is the mysterious high priestess? There is a great possibility and I have every intention to reveal the identity of the high priestess in Deceiving Darkness, but I have no idea if I'm gonna get to that point because if it does happen, it'll probably be towards the very end of the book or it might end up being in an 11th book if there ends up being you know, an extra story in there. So we'll know more when we get to it. At this stage of the process, when I'm starting the book, there's a lot of daydreaming. There's a lot of discussion that happens between me and my husband, sometimes me and my best friend, Bella. I just start really thinking about it. I'm writing a lot in my journals. I'm writing on those plotting sheets that you saw and I'm really thinking about what's gonna happen next in this 
story and it sometimes takes me several weeks to go through that. Well, I also am speaking at a conference next week, uh, the Romance Writers of America National Conference. I'm speaking, I'm doing an immersive workshop on Wednesday for a two hour workshop that I still have preps to do for that. I have a, a panel that I'm speaking on on Friday that is all about writing young adult for the indie market. And I also have a book signing that I'm doing and I'm meeting up with representatives from iBooks and Barnes and Noble and Google Play and all of that. Plus I'm gonna see a lot of my good friends. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I'll be gone for six days, but I'm still going to spend my time on the plane and my time in the hotel room at night, like really thinking about the story because when I get back on the 22nd, I'm hoping to be writing. And you know, if you wanna know when this book is coming, and I know it's the number one question that I get asked in emails and in private messages on Facebook is when is book 10 coming out I don't know I really wanted to have it out by the end of August but I think it's gonna be really tough to get it by August it's just gonna depend on once I start writing is this story going to just flow out of me because sometimes that does happen where it's just like okay now I've got to get it out and there's this passion if I hit a fork in the road and I don't know exactly where things are gonna go then it could be a couple weeks of trying to figure that out. So we'll just have to wait and see. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this sort of behind the scenes. I did take a couple days off with uh, my husband's birthday this week and some beach time, which is also very important as a writer to not always be working because if you want to be a creative person, you have to get out and live life. And what I call refill the well, you have to, you know, refill that well of creativity because if you work yourself too hard and you start to get burned out, it gets really hard to be creative. But we did spend a lot of time in the car working on the plot and I'm starting to get really really excited so I hope you guys enjoyed this sneak peek I will be back with another uh, brief blog on Monday and hopefully I will next Friday a week from today I will be able to give you guys kind of an inside look at what's going on at the conference because I will still be in Denver at the RWA conference so I'll probably do a quick vlog from the hotel that's all I have for you guys but as a special surprise I do have something for you guys to download today on my website sarahcannon.com you can grab the link down below in the description box. I have for you free downloadable signed wallpapers of Beautiful Demons. I know that some of you have really enjoyed the other wallpapers that I've been doing with the signatures and having them for your desktop and your phone and everything. So I'm going to be slowly going through the entire Demon series to give you guys free downloadable wallpapers for the Demon series. So go download your beautiful Demons wallpaper and show it off on your phone, your desktop, and those are yours to keep and feel free to share them with others and get people excited about the Demon series. One of the best things that you can do if you want to support me and the Shadow Demon series, if you really love this series, one of the best things that you can do is share that three book free box set with a friend or tell someone about it online because the more people read it, the more excited we can all get for upcoming book 10 and um, that's one of the best things you can do for me. Another great way to support authors is to go and leave a review on the books that you have read whether it be at Goodreads or Google Play or Amazon or iBooks or wherever it is that you shop for books. If you go and leave reviews that really really helps so I would appreciate that as well. All right guys I hope you have enjoyed this vlog and hope you guys are interested and excited about seeing more of this kind of stuff from me. I appreciate y'all and I will see you in my next video. Have a great weekend. Bye.